the Java Java and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. Cup a cup a cup a cup a cup. I love Java, sweet and hot. Was Mr. Model, I'm a coffee pot. Shoot me a pot and pour me a shot. Cup a cup a cup a cup a cup. Slip me a slug from that wonderful mug, and I cut a rug till I'm snug in the jug. A slice of onion, it's a raw one. Draw one, wait a wait a percolator. I love coffee, I love tea. I love the Java Java and it loves me. Coffee, tea, and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Lost in bean, soybean, green beans, cabbage, and green. I'm not keen for a bean. Unless it is a chibi chibi bean boy. I love coffee, I love tea. I love the Java Java and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. Hello friends, I'm going to show you the chords that I was playing in just a moment. Click the link below to grab the free PDF on my website to follow along with this lesson. And if you're asking yourself what is the strumming pattern, I'm going to link to my video here on building your own swing strum so you could truly understand the style. But let's get started with the introduction, because if you know the introduction to one Ink Spots tune, you know the introduction to every Ink Spots tune. Harmonically, the introduction is just three chords. It's F, F sharp diminished seventh, and C seventh. And we have an ascending bass line throughout. We're going to talk about that first and a specific fingering to use to set us up for success for playing the rest of the introduction. So our bass line is F, F sharp, G on our E string, or the first fret, second fret, and third fret. So intuitively, we might think to play one, two, three, but we're not going to do that. We're going to play one, two, two, and you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to play the first fret with our first finger, second fret with our middle finger, and then we're going to slide up that middle finger. All right, so let's play the bass line first. One, two, three, four. Slide it up. Let's try it again. Three, four. First finger, first fret. Put the middle finger down. Slide it up a fret. Now why are we doing this? Well, it's to set us up for what we need to put over top of it which are the notes C and D, or the third and fifth frets on our A string, those two notes. But if we are using any other fingering, we'll run out of fingers to play this with. So we need to play that ascending bass line with that fingering I just showed you so that you have to jump around a lot less. So we're going to play exactly what we just played, but we're going to put our ring finger on the third fret of the A string, and then we're gonna play the fifth fret with our pinky. And don't worry, if this is a big stretch for you, I'll show you an alternate way to do this in just a moment. So we're going to play this. Move the bass note. Move the bass note by sliding up. Let's try that together. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to land on the C seventh chord here. Three, four, three, three, our bar chord, C seventh. But our melody note is going to be that D on the fifth fret. And we're going to slide it down. We're going to play a ninth to a flat nine. We're going to play D, D flat, and then strum our C. So let's try that together. So we're playing the C seventh voicing. We're just going five, four, three on our A string. Three, four. Try it again. Two, three, four. And now we can put it together, we'll have the first two measures of the introduction. Three, four. Slide that second finger up. Try it again. Three, four. Three, four. 
and the second half is exactly the same, except we take out those moving notes on the A string over top of the C chord. We just strum it with the same rhythm three times. So you already know the entire introduction. Let's try these four measures. Two, three, four. Strum the C7 chord this time. Now what do we do if you can't reach this position? I'm obviously playing soprano uke with rather large hands. You might be playing tenor and have small hands, or maybe you have arthritis in your hands and you can't do these big stretches. That's okay. We can always find other ways to play the same musical idea. And in this case, we'll just change that lick three to five. We'll change it down to our open C string and the second fret of our C string. We'll still play this chord up here because it's not too big of a stretch. So we would end up playing this. We get the same sort of musical idea, but with way less of a stretch. So let's look at the chords that I'm playing. Let's look at the chords that I was playing. I'm not gonna go heavy into the theory side here, but if you want to know more about this and learn how to make these decisions for yourself when looking at a basic chord arrangement, I'm going to link to my video here on jazz harmony and what you need to understand and start to hear to make your own decisions about harmony. Now we're starting out on an F chord, right? And all we're going to do is add the sixth to that. So we're gonna play two, two, one, three. Yes, this is also a D minor seventh chord. But why are we doing this? Because going to that diminished chord, we're creating an extra shared tone, a common tone between the two chords. So we get smoother changes between this nice stable chord and this very tense diminished chord. And then we're going to replace our C seventh chord with a ninth. We're really just adding a note to this. Now note when I come from this F diminished seven to C nine, we're playing this with all individual fingers. We can just slide up here. And then we're gonna do this nice little two, five, one. Slide your ring finger up one fret, G minor seventh, slide it back, that's a C9, and then we're gonna to resolve to F6 straight across. The first few bars sound like this. I love coffee, I love tea. Slide the ring finger. I love the Java Jive and it loves me. Now I'm gonna show you a fun little turnaround that you can use any tune in the key of F. So we're starting on this F6, and all we're doing is pretty much exactly what we just did in a slightly different position. We're gonna play F diminished, just the next inversion of that diminished chord up on the fourth fret, four, five, four, five. Slide the first finger and second finger down. There's your G minor seventh chord we just played. And if we bring the ring finger down to join it, then we get the C nine chord. So we get this nice little progression of. Isn't that just a beautiful little movement? Let's try that together. One beat a piece. One, two, Three, four. Let's do it again. Back to the F6. And then we're coming right back down to this F6 here. We're gonna play what looks like an F7 flat nine. Now we say this is a diminished chord shape, right? But it's just one note away from the F chord and it's bringing us to a B flat. This is a type of F chord, F7 flat nine. And it's gonna bring us to our B flat chord, but I'm gonna add the major nine to it, which is the C on the third fret of my A string. Why am I doing this? It's the melody, simple as that. I'm just keeping this extra shared tone. Between all of these chords and the B flat minor six with an add nine up top. And we get this nice, more stable harmony while we have the bass notes on the uke. Moving. So let's listen to just those first couple measures with these new chords in here. So again, I love coffee, I love tea. G minor seven. I love the Java Jab and it loves me. Coffee and tea and the Java and me. A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup. So let's look at that next little turnaround. This should be F to C seventh in the measure, right? But really, we're gonna replace it with this three chord instead. So we're gonna play A minor seventh, 
to E diminished seventh. We've now used every single diminished chord on the instrument. There are only three. We've used all of them at this point in the song. E diminished seventh, and then we're just sliding back into that G minor seventh to C9. And the first ending, you already know, it's that same turnaround. So we get these two nice turnarounds together. We get three, six, two, five, one, six, two, five. This is a great little exercise if you want to learn some fun new chord voicings. Just play these two measures back to back. Let's try it now. One, two, three, four. Again, A minor seventh. Good. Let's try the new chords in the A section of the tune. One, two, three, four. I love coffee. I love tea. I love the Java Jive and it loves me. Coffee and tea. And the java and me A cup, a cup, a cup, a cup, a cup Now what can we do on the B section? What I've done on the B section of this tune is actually take a little bit of the harmony from the original score for this where the ink spots just lay on this B flat 7 It was actually written this cool little ascending line going on which is B flat 7 to B diminished 7 to F minor 6, just one note moving each time to F minor 7th. So you get, oh, slip me a slug from that wonderful mug. I cut a rug till I'm snug in a jug. So we get this great little ascending line moving instead of staying on one chord. It's really saying the same exact thing in a different way. It is riding on that A flat, which is the important note. Everything else can move around it. That's the note that's not in the key of F. That is special. It gives that bluesy sound of that four chord, that B flat seven. That A flat is the one that makes it special. So by choosing other chords that have that in it, the composer has created this beautiful moving line. So let's try that on the B flat seven, moving on up. One, two, three, four. Slip me a slug from that wonderful mug. Back to B flat. I cut a rug till I'm snug in the jug. And we stay right there. And the only thing I changed in the second half, you'll see on the sheet, is this G minor seven flat five coming down to C. Just a slightly different voicing of this. I hope you all have enjoyed this lesson. If you like in-depth lessons like this, join me over at the Tim Man's Magic Ukulele Club where we take songs even further than this and have new lessons to practice harmony and soloing every single week. I'll see you all over there.